Today, we'll be diving into a topic that affects us all. So sit back, relax, and turn up your volume and listen to this episode of Daily Dose of Reality. Boom. So as you guys can see, I have a special guest here with me, Natalie. Natalie, introduce yourself to the people real quick. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for coming. My name is Natalie McGlashan, and I'm a licensed mental health counselor here in sunny South Florida. Huh. How long have you been doing that for? I've been doing that, I think I would say, since 2015. Okay. So, so how long is that? <laughs> you suck. I don't do math. I do, I do, I do socials. That's, that's cool. That's cool. Math. Yeah. So 2016, mm-hmm. um, did you have to go to school to become a mentor? I did. How long? I went for my undergrad at Florida State University, ah. and then I went for grad school. So that was about four, five, six, maybe six and a half years. Oh, I give you props. Oh, my gosh. And I went to grad school at UCF. Oh, my gosh. There that. was more schooling after yeah. that. Yeah. Well, OK, so I messed up. Okay. I went to Florida State for four years. OK. Then I went to UCF for two and a half years for my master's. That's still a lot of schooling. Yeah. I did two. Well, I did two years at Palm Beach State, okay. um, but there weren't like it was like I was not a full time student. And then I mm-hmm. was. But then I was already like working and I had two jobs and at one point three jobs. Mm-hmm. And I quickly realized schooling was not for you. Yeah. Really? So I but you're finish. so skilled. Um, so that's the thing, right? I, I believe that schooling is important uh, to about, you know, high school. Like after you graduate high school, I think there's a lot of trades that you mm-hmm. can learn without college. Okay. Um, so I, I, I believe that you, you should continue to learn. Mm-hmm. I just don't think it should be in a classroom where you sit there for 12, 10 hours. Mm-hmm. I think I was taking 10 hour classes. It was like Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays or something like that. 10 hour, not 10 hours, like three or four hours mm-hmm. in there, you know? Um, but yeah, I think, you know, you, if you have a a certain skill set, you know, you should hone it, master it. Um, in my case, you know, I've I've been doing it for as long as I can remember, like Mm -hmm. 2010. And then one thing led to another. Mm -hmm. Then I like, you know, smart things and, you know, I kind of went hand in hand. So, yeah, that's good. But yeah, um, yeah, I I don't know. Six years of schooling is a lot. (laughs) Like that's, that's a lot. You know, it's crazy because the four years of school was more torturous than the master's program. And I think that's because in the master's program, I actually enjoyed it. That's when I actually found my passion, which was therapy. And I was like, oh, this doesn't really feel like school. I think other therapists might agree too. like the master's when you actually are in what you want to do. It's not as strenuous okay I, yeah. and is that something you already knew you wanted to do in absolutely high school not. really absolutely not wow <laughs> nah because see for i think for you to make a choice of going to school for six years i think like you would have had to no not my not in this case what did you think you were gonna do in <laughs> high school in high school i think i wanted to be a pediatrician at first really yeah because okay. my mother's side has a lot of medical people in it but um i didn't like school i really didn't like school yeah, nah, I don't <laughs> trust me. I know. <laughs> I uh, no. I like. I think school for me it took a turn sophomore year. I felt like I don't know. I was it was pressure. Mm-hmm. It was like you know I needed to graduate. So I, I mean I wasn't a bad student, but yeah. I was fairly smart, and it, I I think so. Um, and when sophomore year hits, it was like all right, cool. Now you need to graduate, so, or you need to prepare for graduation so you can get a job mm-hmm. and be an adult. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no. So after college, I was like, yeah, no, I I never looked back. I got um some certs, you know. Mm-hmm. So like I said, I continue to learn different things, but yeah, yeah no, college for me is is not something that I. All right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so you're a mental health coach. No, I'm not. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> mental <laughs> mental health counselor. Yes. All right. So, is there such a thing as a mental health coach? I know there's a life coach. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't know if a life coach requires a degree. Okay. But a licensed mental health counselor does require a degree. All right. So, as a mental health counselor, mm-hmm. what is your day like? What is a day like in your life? What is you know a Monday like? Yeah. Well, first, I have to say that I'm a mental health counselor. Who, all, who works for somewhere full time, but I also have my own private practice. Okay. So I see my private clients sometimes on Mondays after my full time job. So with that being said, uh, uh, 
a typical day looks like me going to a facility where I work at and mm -hmm. I work at a residential level of care facility where that's more so um, more high risk cases, you know, I don't know if you want details about that, but some, it's, <laughs> some so it's more high risk situations, like maybe their mental health is at a more severe level at this time. So they really need stabilization. Ooh. So, yeah. So they're just seeking stabilization, whether it's them or their family, but it's a voluntary program. So at any time, as long as they're not, you know, at risk of harming themselves or others, they can leave. So that's where I am pretty much eight hours of the day. Okay. And then after that, I sometimes will have a private client where I'm more selective with who I take on as a private client mm -hmm. because typically they're more high functioning. Okay. So that's and pretty much what a day looks like. That selective process. What, what do you do? How do you determine if mm -hmm. you, you would see somebody? Yeah. So it depends on how they get to me because I have clients who are referred to me through like mutual like friends in the therapy world mm -hmm. so they usually get like you know they get to cut the line but then i also have a website where if you fill out like this form um you can have a 15 minute consultation with me okay that's free of charge and i ask some questions and i just see sort of what's going on now when you first came by earlier you made a comment after i said i don't like quiet what was that like oh uh, yeah see, <laughs> I mean, I walked in here and the whole thing's booming and it's only like, so, it's not late. Yeah. So look, I don't, I don't know how people, you see, again, this is, this is maybe, I don't know, maybe you can diagnose me real quick, right? So maybe. the thing is, I don't like quiet, right? And it's not say to say that I like chaos either. It's like, my brain already has enough going on. So it's, it's, it's to me, it's like music or, or mm -hmm. something just kind of like helps me focus in a way. You know, so I'm listening to music at all times. So therefore, it like takes my mind away from the million and one things that it could be. See, that's the part that I latched on to. Because <sighs> when you walk into someone's space and it's like music or you're around someone who can like never be by themselves, the question that pops into my head is what are you running from? Like, what are the thoughts that you're trying to drain out so much where you need music blasting? <sighs> you know, those are the type of things that I would be. What am I running from? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Or it could maybe you do need all like stimulation everywhere. That could just be a part of your personality too. But people who often come to me and say like, I don't like being alone. It's usually because when they're alone is when those thoughts that they don't really like come. And it could be about anything, but whether it's your past sneaking up on you or intrusive, I don't know what, what you got going on in there. <laughs> but that's sometimes a reason why people always want to be around someone, always want to be doing some things because they don't like that solitude because it's not yeah. peaceful. I, uh, <laughs> uh oh, oh gosh, uh -oh. I'll, I'll tell you what, though, I, I can't. A lot of people like people who know me and they always say this. They always say I'm working on something. Mm -hmm. um, I, I borderline have like ADHD at this point, self-diagnosed and everything. But mm -hmm. I just I can't not do nothing like, you know, I can't stay stagnant and like don't do anything at all or, but my question is why do you think that you having a moment of peace and not moving ha is a waste because you have to take care of yourself and if you just keep going 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 it, it usually catches up with you but you know i don't know anything i don't know <laughs> it's anything. not like you went to what, six years yeah, of schooling for this right i don't um, know it's about balance that's the most important thing i think yeah um but it's I don't know. Now I gotta think about it. <laughs> see, you're gonna see. This is this is probably a thought that I need no music for, and just sit there and like I don't know, kind of home or something. Just sit there. Um, for sure. Um, but yeah. So now you also mentioned real quick. Um, you know some of the severe cases. You mm -hmm. know that you deal with. Um, mm -hmm. just gonna make an assumption here that you deal with a lot of people that are depressed. Mm -hmm. Um. So what are some of the case like reasonings that you see as far as for some of their depression? What's it, what like what is maybe the trigger point? Yes. Yeah. For what I will say is some people have like a trigger, like an event mm -hmm. that, you know, has happened and it could be anything you think of that makes you sad. Right. Someone passing away, a business failing, um, a relationship failing, um, a lot of things. But then there's also depression where it's they really can't identify a real issue it's more so maybe like some type of chemical thing where medication is necessary. It really depends. So sometimes I may have a client who's depressed and they are like on on April 5th, 
this happened and I this just ever since then I haven't been the same or there's people who are like I don't know like I just lost interest one day and it just never came back so it really just depends mm -hmm. and you mentioned you know a breakup so oh god no like no here, here's <laughs> and, and I'll tell you my, my personal experience right so mm -hmm. obviously I don't know, I'm old now and I've gone through several breakups You're or whatnot old? yeah okay. all right okay. my knees are old okay right? So I've gone through several breakups throughout my life. Mm -hmm. And one thing, and I, I've known other people that do that too. One thing I've never understood is mm -hmm. the people that go through a breakup and for whatever reason, they listen to sad music after. Mm -hmm. I, I never understood that. But now that you mention it, if I'm going through a breakup and I'm like listening to, what's her name? H-E-R, her? Her, All right, yeah. she's evil, okay? Um, so <laughs> okay. she <laughs> she has a song named, I think it's U2 or 2 or something. Right? I don't know. That song is evil. Um, but like, to me, it makes sense that if I'm going through a breakup, I would like want to do everything in my power to, to, you know, overcome it, right? You know what's so crazy about that? What? Because it makes sense for you to, for you who avoids things and runs from things. Oh, bloody hell. That. Damn, I set myself up for that you one. You are. It right. makes sense that you'd want to do everything to get over it because you won't sit with it. Now, there's people who listen to music for all types of reasons. Like I know when I'm feeling sad, sometimes I listen to music, but it's more so also to um, be able to hear someone who's going through the same thing, like to connect with someone. That could be the reason. Or sometimes people really like are sad or they know that they should be sad. What is so funny? No, I'm like, like, it's like, no, you're saying all these things. I'm like, God dang it. She's right. <laughs> Bloody hell. <All> right. <laughs> or maybe there's like something has occurred in your life and you know, you're supposed to be sad. And maybe you seek like sad music or a sad movie. Cause you're not really feeling those emotions, but you know that that's supposed to be there. See, but to me, it's like, I don't know. I don't allow myself to spend much time and sadness it's Why not, not it's not it's not necessarily that i'm running away from it or mm -hmm. at least in my world i don't think i'm running away from it it's mm -hmm. just there's nothing positive that i can see come out, come out of me being sad mm -hmm. like granted i mean i like to use a breakup because i think it's universal right mm -hmm. regardless of who you are at one point you had a crush on somebody or that you know things may not have worked out in your favor mm -hmm. so when it doesn't like i would rather have that moment of realization like yo like you know boom i could be sad for a day or two a week or a month mm -hmm. or but at no point am i wanting myself to stay in that state so i want to get over it like i, I want to i want to like you know mm -hmm. i don't know i'm listening to boosie or something for like two three months like i so it's like that's how i cope with with sadness and mm -hmm. it, it just never made sense to me that people would just sit there and freaking listen to another person that sings about all their sad experiences mm -hmm. and cry their heart out just yeah i mean what i will say <laughs> was that a fly again yeah <laughs> go ahead what i will say about um you saying that it's kind of strange or weird whatever word you use is that luckily for you you don't have to do that right because we all cope and deal with things in all types of different ways so for you where you it sort of sounds like you're saying you're choosing whether or not to be sad for some people you don't have control over that like for me if i go through a life event of course, the next day I want to be happy, but sometimes it just doesn't work like that. I can't just say to myself, oh, it's over. Be happy. It doesn't work like that. And if you are able to do that. I have superpowers. Something. something <laughs> something's different about you. But I will say, though, that there are some people who dwell in it. I don't know how healthy that is, but I don't see anything wrong with actually really trying to tap into that emotion, like feel what's going on with you. All right. Regardless of what I actually say, there is moments where I do feel sadness. Okay. <laughs> okay All right. Okay. So I'm, I'm human just like the next person. Yeah, but for sure. the only thing that I'm able to say that I probably do better than most is mm -hmm. allow other people to see it. Um, it may be like, I don't know, I probably spend a lot of time, you know, masking my emotions off to the point where you, like right now, I could be going through some shit and you would not be able to know it. Like, you know, you think so? Okay. Maybe the loud music when you, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the loud, I just, all right. I, I, I like music very loud. I mean, right? I like music too. Right. But I don't know. Um, but yeah. Okay. So now mm -hmm. being that I'm not saying some of the things you said, if they're true or not, but how would you say, right, mm -hmm. someone can either cope or even begin to handle either anxiety or depression? Yeah. So what I would say is the well, first thing I said, which was is acknowledging it, right? Not running from it, not avoiding it, but identifying like, okay, I am sad about this or you can, okay, I'm really anxious about this. And then from there, it really depends, right? Because mm -hmm. 
Obviously, there's coping skills that we share with everybody, but certain things do not work for certain people. Like certain people working out would, would be good. Um, certain people being around their family and friends would be good, depending on how healthy those supports are. Um, doing something new, like introducing something new to your life, things like that. So anxiety and depression, like there's little intervention type of things where it's like journaling about it. There's... Um, yoga there's taking an exercise class there's listening to music there's um joining a support group depending on what the issue is and then of course there's therapy which i'm always an advocate for yes i can only imagine why you know six years of schooling and everything <laughs> oh my gosh no, i'm still stuck gonna on that still one go back to that yeah no that is that is that is definitely that's a long time actually i have a friend that's becoming a doctor and this nigga's been in school for like 12 years now i'm just Oh, gosh. But no, um, you mentioned, you know, a support system. Mm -hmm. So uh, say if I'm dating somebody. I don't know. <laughs> dating right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't Jesus Christ. On it. <laughs> right? It's crazy. These people, y'all generation Listen, nuts. What you mean my generation, girl? The dating pool is caca right now, right? If Something's you, wrong. Listen, I don't even know at what point it took such a severe turn, but. <laughs> I would not leave a good Yelp review. That shit is just, oh, the gosh. The stories I hear are quite crazy. D yeah? Just, <laughs> <laughs> you man, okay? You okay? I'm telling you. Listen, dating is probably reason enough to just to be depressed. God dang it. Like, oh, I don't God. even know what some of the, man, y'all girls out here are something else. Who's y'all? Uh, all right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> y'all mm -hmm. i am not a part all right all right the, some of the the women in the dating pool okay okay right. well that might have to be an episode for another day <laughs> y'all men ain't uh some of y'all men are not all right up I, there either okay I, i'll give you that all right it, it's both sides mm -hmm. all right i think for sure okay i think some men could do better and i also think some women can also do better for sure all right. we but as, people. as mm -hmm. far as dating you know say if you're seeing somebody and mm -hmm. you feel like you're you know depressed or you know having some mental problems how do mm -hmm. you even begin to like approach that mm -hmm. like yeah so i think if you're dating someone now the thing what you just said about dating is nuts and all those things is true because i i've grown to learn that what dating is defined like what you define dating as may be completely different from somebody else yeah so what does that mean to you when you're dating someone so um well first off i learned <laughs> It's gonna sound silly, but I, I want to say like nothing sounds silly. Years ago, a few years ago, I learned dating is like you said different to every like mm -hmm. uh, person. Um, for the longest time in my life, I thought dating was a relationship, right? Okay. So when I used to hear people say, "Oh, I'm dating this person," there's a fly in here, y'all. I'm so sorry, and all right, I don't know if it's I like can like crazy launch. right now. It's not like the topic, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it's here. If you see it on camera, that's what, that's that's there's a fly in here, but. Um, yeah, so I learned that dating meant, you know, different things to, mm -hmm. through different yeah. people the hard way, but it's, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't mind it, <laughs> don't mind Sorry. it, right? <laughs> but it's like, I, I thought it was just, you know, everybody, when they say they were dating somebody, mm -hmm. I thought you meant like you're in a relationship. Yeah. And when I learned that was not the case, I was like, oh shit, all right, I was late, you know, to the mm -hmm. game. So now yeah. it's kind of like, I make it a point to make sure that we're on the same page, or at least, you, do that. you know, I, I know what your definition of dating is, so I don't, you know, <laughs> overstep or exactly, not perform you know, I don't, sure. don't want to, you know, give you my all you over here think you're just entertaining six people. With meanwhile, sure. I'm boo boo the fool. Like, but yeah, yeah, so once now I know I would say dating is the new term, I guess you're getting to know one another to okay. see if you want to pursue a relationship okay. with this person. So I think that's the the meaning of dating now so okay. some people date multiple people some people date i don't know exclusively so, <laughs> like, so now i now know you know yeah. but now to me dating is essentially getting to know somebody you know with the hopes of potentially getting into a relationship okay, okay. so then knowing that it's with the hopes of getting into a relationship that you know clarifies it a little bit for me because sometimes in regards to mental health and stuff i'm one who says to my clients it, it's not everyone's business mm -hmm. but if we're talking about you actually trying considering pursuing this person like this may be your future person mm -hmm. i think it's very important that you share about your mental health so what's important is having open communication 
you know, having open communication and being able to say like, hey, um, (laughs) I struggle with anxiety or I struggle with depression or, you know, I've been diagnosed with this, this and that. And, you know, seeing because possibly if you express that to the person you're trying to date and they have like a a strong reaction in a negative way, you know, maybe that's not the person for you. So I, I definitely am an advocate because if you're going out of your way to hide your mental um, diagnosis, or if you're hiding, you know, maybe that you take medication or something like how long is that going to keep up for? And then on top of that, then your partner, if you don't disclose that, like the trust is already broken because you're not sharing a very important part, I would assume about you to someone you're considering building a life with. Okay. And do you think you should even attempt to date somebody if you feel like you're going through some mental health issues? I think there's levels to it. Because what does that mean? You being anxious or having some depression sometimes or feeling sad is different than, you know, having some severe thoughts of not wanting to be here and all those things where it's going to probably bleed onto your partner. So it really just depends, to be honest. But I don't think that, no, if you have some anxiety or depression or if you have a diagnosis, you're not supposed to date. Because what does that mean? We're just supposed to be single for the rest of our lives? <laughs> Listen, I don't know I'm how that would work. This dating. <laughs> what I would say is that I really would hope that you're on top of your mental health. Like even if you have something, you're you're taking care of yourself. You got to be OK by yourself. It's not fair to get in a relationship and not be OK, because all that does is negatively affect the person. And probably maybe ruins your relationship when it didn't have to be like that. Yeah. um, I'm definitely going to approach dating lightly now. Just the same, you know, don't be depressed and try to get you a stack. Okay. That's not a, that's not a, mm -mm. Mm -mm. no, I don't, how does that even work? I don't even see how that could work. So, and (laughs) I guess now that I'm having this conversation with Mm -hmm. you, like in the back of my mind, there's been like events that took place or I've experienced and I'm just like, oh, you probably were going through some shit. But at the same time, though, um, if if I am trying to date somebody, I, I guess it's my. I I don't know. I, I feel like sometimes I shouldn't have to deal with certain things with certain individuals. And so I think you should probably, you know, take the time to figure your shit out before I have to deal with it. Oh, yeah. Um, like I at no point feel like if i'm getting to know you i should already be dealing with somebody that's going through some severe anxiety issues Mm -hmm, severe mm -hmm, depression mm -hmm. um yeah and my personality is i'm very you know optimistic and i have a you know upbeat and i'm like very like you know happy all the time and you know a lot (laughs) of people will tell you well yeah when i'm listening to my loud music okay (laughs) right but no um a lot of people tell you it's like yo why are you always smiling like i'm Mm -hmm, giddy and mm -hmm. and i'm always like you know in a good mood for the most part right so if I'm dating somebody who's depressed or you're like, we're not even in a relationship stage yet. And I'm already seeing that side of you. Mm-hmm. I want to call quits. I don't want to deal with it mm-hmm. at all. Like, and I, I can understand that, especially if it's someone new. Right. Yeah. Like, like I, I should be, you know, seeing the best side of you, not mm-hmm. not you sad and like listening to her like <laughs> the hell man i mean like i said it really just depends on what that person has going on i do not think just because you have a diagnosis of like anxiety depression schizophrenia bipolar any any of the many diagnosis i do not think that means that you shouldn't be seek love or try to find love however like we mentioned the word severe mm-hmm. and you know Hopefully, you know, if something is severe. Yeah, I don't think that's right to try to pursue someone else because that means you're pretty much trying to find happiness in somebody else. And why are you doing that? <laughs> why are you doing that? I'm sure her H.E.R. has a song oh about finding. Right? And I'm sure Lil Boosie and all them people. Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm a gangster when I'm sad. All right? Kurt, you you pull up to this house. Oh, man, oh my God. I'm telling you, Devils is playing on level 10. OK. Right, I, I I don't know. I just I just listen to songs with a lot of different topics. I I don't <laughs> I don't want to deal with like you know no no whoever broke my heart. Just no, I blame it on you, right? Shout her out. <laughs> hell no, nah, the hell you got. Excuse <laughs> <laughs> me. Shout her out, girl. Shoot. You still in his mind. Nah, girl, this is better. <laughs> Shoot, you blocked. Hey, you ain't even gonna see this. <laughs> But um, like, do you do you see couples like do couples come to you and, and you know, tell you some mm-hmm. of the things they're going through? I do. What's that like? Like, I I don't know, because 
I've always felt like if I'm in a relationship with somebody mm -hmm. and I'm trying to explain our situation to a third party, I feel like I'm like letting them in our business. Like, I don't know. How do how do, do mm -hmm. people deal with that? Well, the thing about it is a third party, like a friend, is different than a therapist. Okay. I can only speak for me and maybe some of the therapists that I associate with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, clients, my clients, if you're watching this, I love you. <laughs> I love you. We love our clients. But I promise we have our own lives and we have a lot of other clients that we are working with. And we don't see it as like, oh, like, oh, my, ooh, this couple said this and we're going to call our friend about it. So we don't look at it like, oh, we're we're in your business to try to be nosy. We're really trying to dig into the couple to see like where a solution is. How can we move forward? How can we make this relationship healthy? How can we determine if maybe we shouldn't be in this relationship? So for me, when like a couple's telling you their business, I can see how that's really uncomfortable. But when you have the thought of, oh, this person is here, non-biased, not on my side, not on my partner's side, and really just here to help us figure this out, hopefully that helps. You know, I mean, you're already in the seat with the therapist. There's nothing to lose. You're about to lose your relationship. Well, I, I see it in a sense of I'm going to run into you at Walmart after this, you know, like because that, that's what I mean. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there, you know, sharing my, you know, I don't want to say darker sides, but, you know, the sides that people don't get to see out of me. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there in a chair, like allow my, allowing myself to be exposed in that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, damn, all right, cool. Now, you know, all these things about me and I'm going to run into you and be like, oh, shit. Damn, now she knows about this. Now, like, that's what I'm going to be mean, thinking I, about the whole I, time. I can imagine someone feeling like that. But I mean, I've run into clients outside and I can tell you from an ethical standpoint, like if let's say you were my client mm -hmm. and I saw you out and about in Publix or whatever, I wouldn't approach you like we're not supposed to. Oh, OK. Yeah. So if you came to me, then I can acknowledge you. But if you're out and about, I'm not really supposed to acknowledge you. So. If anybody ever saw the therapist out and they like walked by you, that's why we're not supposed to approach you because that's your business. You being in therapy is confidential. And so uh -huh. if you want to act like you don't know me, I do just that. However, going back to your point of you feeling like, oh, my gosh, this woman knows everything about me. I'm sure that would be a feeling that people feel. But like when I see a client who's going through a lot, I don't really have that thought of, oh, he told me, he told me <laughs> this yesterday. Like, I don't think like that. Have you, okay, so have you ever seen a couple and you definitely, like, everything in you, like, you're able to tell well, who is the problem, like, who has the severe mental issue, like, how do you even begin with, you know, you're trying to not be biased, mm -hmm, right, but mm -hmm. then you clearly see where mm -hmm. the issue lies. Yeah. How do you even begin to, to, you know, like, speak to a couple like that? Do you even... Try to say, hey, Billy, if Sam's it, not for you or, you know. No, no, no. See, the thing about therapy, which is interesting, which I think sometimes people don't understand is a therapist does not give you the solutions, right? Like you can be my client and your girlfriend could be beating you up. As a therapist, I'm not supposed to tell you to leave. Is that one of the severe cases that you've dealt with? <laughs> no, I'm, Dude, just, Jesus. I'm not using any of my <laughs> client information in any of this. I'm just saying like you. in a situation like that, even if it's like you really shouldn't be in that relationship, a therapist is not supposed to say that. A therapist is supposed to ensure your safety no matter what. So if you, for some reason, are with someone who is deciding to beat you up, mm -hmm. um, I shouldn't ever say you need to leave. You need to leave her. I would never say that. I would say, are you sure that's something you like want to be? Like, is that someone you want to be with? And sort of let you see it in your own way. But going back to what you said, though. What did you, oh, about telling a couple that they shouldn't be together. Mm -hmm. Yes. As a therapist, sometimes you definitely can identify this is a major issue. And sometimes in a therapy session, I've had a session, I've had a client, clients in a session where I said, you guys need to seek your own individual counseling and then you guys can come back to me because the issues were not even between them. It's like your own interpersonal issues. Mm -hmm. You need to figure that out and then you can come back to me. This is not, this is not beneficial at all at this point um i joke a lot about <laughs> about to say about <laughs> you know i i tell people you know i joke a lot about um that i'm a youtube certified <laughs> psychiatrist mm. right and i don't like before i even if i were to approach 
a therapist right <laughs> by the time i get there i'm like doing self analyzation i'm trying to figure out what my true issue is before i mm-hmm. even get there but i obviously don't think you know many people are like that they just kind of you know hit it heads on mm-hmm. so i don't know me me sitting in the chair really talking to somebody mm-hmm. about things i'm going through mm-hmm. it sounds scary to me like I, I'm, I would be scared shitless i'd probably like fucking be fidgeting the whole time and like you know i don't know if people sit there with the pen and just click it or at least have mm-hmm. something in their hand that would be one thousand mm-hmm. percent me i would not like i don't even know how to begin to be comfortable with but like what if i told you that that is probably a result of something that has happened to you in the past or even in your childhood why you feel so uncomfortable being vulnerable talking about your emotions and feelings well oh bloody hell all right um uh, i'm not even gonna lie to you my upbringing um we i'm haitian so in our household mm-hmm. uh, like I, I don't even i know some haitian is gonna watch this out here and, and correct me all right but i don't even know how to say depression or anxiety mm-hmm. in Creole. i don't even the word think the word is exists like i said some some haitian out there is gonna correct me but we weren't necessarily raised in a household to where we were speaking about our feelings yeah. and i think that goes beyond you know the haitian community it it's, it's probably you know black community like mm-hmm. i don't i don't think many men spend a lot of time you know speaking about the way they feel and mm-hmm. the way you know their mental health state and where it oh, currently yeah. lies Even in the white community too they yeah don't you know for you men unfortunately a lot of the the feedback you get about emotions is negative yep. you know or you're told to be a man what are you crying for uh you don't need to cry about it all those things so that makes a lot of sense yeah i have had those episodes too but for like sure. it, it's I, I get and like you said that could probably be why i don't necessarily see myself opening up that much with mm-hmm. that like You'd that's be surprised, yeah though. that's You'd why it's surprised. so it's so scary to me you know like <laughs> i'm like well i'm sad because that Yo, like I can't even begin to to, to do stuff mm-hmm. like that, and like you said, it's if it is my upbringing, um, definitely I think you know, I was just I was just raised as far as mm-hmm. to where you know, hey, there's bigger issues than how you feel. You know, you have a roof over your head, yeah. you have food to eat. Well, figure it out. You know, yeah. like why? What are you sad about? There's you know, that's that's kind of like a lot of people oh, that's that's how and you know that's honestly also unfortunately why a lot of people end up doing something drastic because they felt like they couldn't express how they were feeling or they're out here self-medicating Ooh. damn she got bars <laughs> you know there's like i i hear what you're saying and that's for sure but when you've exhausted everything right like i'm depressed i've tried the working out i've tried the eating healthy i've tried the uh doing whatever and you get to the point of getting to a therapist, mm-hmm. although hopefully at some point that won't be the therapy won't be the oh, my gosh, I have to. This is the end. all be all. Hopefully this will start being something where people just do it. It's just like going to the grocery store. Mm-hmm. But if you've gotten to the point where you're like, OK, I've tried all these things and it's not working. I feel like maybe the fear will disip- like dissipate because you'll be like, OK, F it. I might as well, because what's there to lose? I'm already losing my mind. I'm telling you, she got bars, right? And notice how she men- several times she's mentioned working out. So if you're looking for a reason to work out, okay, work out because it's gonna help your mental state of mind. All right, that, that's works. a good re- reasoning. For those, well, I'm sure th- if, you, if you're watching this, you probably don't know how we we met. Mm-hmm. Um, we met through the Bay, which uh, the last episode I shot was with the two coaches from there, uh, mm-hmm. Dom and Huncho. Yeah. Um, she was working out there and so was i which is how we met and uh, i have her on instagram and you know i've seen that's what you know she does for a living which is why i reached out to her Mm -hmm. um but and you said i didn't talk (sighs) (laughs) i think you talk i think you talk i do talk i'm just selective with who i talk to yeah outside of the therapy world of course yeah this is this is at the gym um (laughs) i think she talks a lot at the gym she does a lot of dancing too but I think, uh, but yeah, anyways, that's how we met was <laughs> at the bay. Okay. <laughs> All right. We met at the gym. Um, but no, and this is like, as I'm, you know, getting this, this feedback from you, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm also doing some, you know, like that analyzation that I mentioned. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out like, huh, is that why I do this? Is that why I do that? Mm-hmm. Some of the things that you've mentioned are definitely, uh, they're, they're true. I would say, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I don't know. 
Yeah. I, I don't know. But I, I definitely understand what you're saying about being afraid to literally bear your soul to someone. But when you put it in the thought of like, this is literally a therapist, this is what they do. It's not just a random person, you know, that you're talking to. It's a it's a therapist that you're talking to. And then in regards to like being Haitian, of course, like there's a lot of different stigmas against mental health, you know? Yeah, I don't even know how I'd e- I would even like approach my parents and say, oh, you know, hey, I'm going to see somebody about my yeah. ma-. They'd be like, huh? <laughs> They'd be like, what? You ain't eat today? I know. <laughs> you want I some know. food? <laughs> I know, but the crazy part is mental health is out here, right? Like we all may have that little uncle who's at the family function and they say, oh, that's just Uncle Tommy, you yeah. know, pushing Uncle Tommy to the corner. But Uncle Tommy obviously has some issues so it is an unfortunate thing oh you're thirsty again yeah it is an unfortunate thing that there's a stigma but you know maybe you have to get to a point where you don't even tell your parents that you're seeking this they're just gonna see you glowing one day and <laughs> yeah. be like oh, who is oh, that oh well, go on <laughs> <laughs> nah um yeah I, I definitely i mean i've never in my life even thought about seeing a Someone? Therapist? No, yeah. never. It's just it's not even a thought that like has crossed my mind. It's it's just it's like I try to deal with every I mean, again, the more I speak about this, <laughs> the, the more I'm realizing like, oh shit, you're right. Like, I don't know, I just never thought of just allowing someone to see these these sides of me. I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not one to like sit there and just allow you to to get in my brain and like figure me out or mm-hmm. you know, nah. It's just that oh I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that because it's not that I won't allow it. It's scary as hell to me. Right. Like why though? What do you think the therapist is doing? <sighs> um writing and, like in their little book about you? Yeah, like oh this guy's crazy. <laughs> He listens to Boosie when he's sad. No, like, not at all. I, I don't know. It's it's scary. It's scary as hell to me. No, it's scary, though. I'm not even going to hold you. It is scary when you first even make an appointment. Even like consultations that have called me, they'll be like, I'm just so scared. And I'll be like, and it's just a normal conversation. And, you know, maybe one therapist won't work for you, but the next might because we're all extremely different. Like there's education behind it, but how we approach different things and things like that is extremely different. You might, you might, you should probably just try it just to see. What if I cry? What's wrong with that? Oh, gosh. <laughs> What's wrong yeah, with that? Mm, nah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, my gosh. Now nah, I'm more concerned that, listen, <laughs> I would be more concerned that you saw tears come out of my really? eyes. Really? What? And, you know, uh, sometimes a therapist, like, gets happy inside. When I have a client who cries, especially one who doesn't cry. That's even scary. Like, who? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's like, just like, oh, my gosh, this person's finally allowing allowing themselves to feel something. Like, that's what it is. It's not like, a, oh, yay, I'm hurting this person. It's more so a, wow, this person is really feeling it. And because sometimes what you need to change, what needs to happen for you to change is for it to affect you and for you to feel it. If you don't sit with the emotions and feel it, you're bound to repeat the negative thing. Ooh, bars. All right. nah, yeah. I see. And sign me Kodak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, he's gonna watch it and be like, yeah. All right. Um how do you like I I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm still I'm still thinking about some other things that you said. Like I yeah, I, I definitely don't come from a background of and I, I can say it not only for myself, mm-hmm. I can say it for my brother. They won't say it, but I can say it for my brothers. Mm-hmm. I can say it for my sister. She's crazy as shit. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Love you. <laughs> She's going to watch this. Uh, but no, um, we weren't. And again, I love my parents. Yeah, right. For sure. Like we all love our parents. And it's, this is not to like discredit the way they raised me at for all. Sure, for sure. Um, like I said, I think their main concern was you have a roof over your head. Mm-hmm. Your belly is full. Mm-hmm. What is it that you have to be sad about? Yeah. Right? Like, there's people that have less. There's mm-hmm. people that are on the street. Mm-hmm. There's people that haven't ate in three days. Nigga, the fuck? Like, get over your sadness. Like, and I'm not saying that's what their 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 way of thinking is. But that's but how you Yeah. It. Yeah. Because it's mm-hmm. like, there's bigger things to deal with in the world. Like, ain't nobody worried about you being sad or depressed or getting over a breakup. Like, go to the gym. You know, that you that's know, how I took it. And, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you're right. There is a lot of things going around, going off in the world. And that's why we need peace within ourselves. 
So if finding peace within ourselves requires us to go talk to someone, that's what we have to do because this world is crazy. I agree. So I hear what you're saying. Like I said, you know, that's not, you're not alone in feeling like that. I've experienced that. I am very aware of that from clients and from my own life. Cause I'm Jamaican. I'm Jamaican. Well, I go on my youth. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All of that. So, so I hear what you're saying, but, um, your childhood though, and those messages that you received affect you now. That's why you blasting the music and not tapping in. That's why when you have a breakup, you're just doing whatever you do, building something in your house instead of actually tapping into like, how did this affect me? What do I need to do differently? What did I gain from this relationship versus just bump her? She blocked. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> and again, like I, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm getting so much insight from this conversation right now. I'm not even knocking you. Like I, I'm really gaining. Are you lying? Nah. Um, I can tell by your body language. You seem a little uncomfortable. No, again, I'm talking about like how I feel <laughs> like this is, this would be me behind closed doors talking to you. Like I can't like. I would much rather do this over like the phone or something before I can <laughs> sit there and like allow somebody to look at me and I'm telling you about my feelings. I can do it over the phone. just fine. Like I'm like fucking you ever seen like the post when somebody's on the phone and their feet is up. Mm-hmm. Like, I can do that all day long. Mm-hmm. You know, I can tell you how I feel about mm-hmm. everything. But for you to be, you know, four feet from me and mm-hmm. like I got to tell you all these things. I'm just like, oh, gosh, like I got to find something to, like play. I need one of those like fidget spinners or mm-hmm. something because it's it's. And again, it's not a bad thing. It's just uncomfortable for yeah, me because I've never necessarily done something like, you know, like, you mm-hmm. know, this in a state of, you know, where you're a professional and I'm like, you know, having these conversations. Yeah. And, you know, and if this is uncomfortable for you, I could just imagine what a session would do for you because I'm not even really I'm not really even asking you anything. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I'm not really asking you anything. Like, So how does that even how does that work? Like uh-huh. what what what's, you know, for the, and. I'm asking these questions not only for me, but um, again, I know a lot of people, my close friends, mm-hmm. these niggas ain't never seen nobody. They, uh-huh. they ain't talking about how they, you know, they feeling and what yeah. impacted them as a mm-hmm, kid. Mm-hmm. But for those people that, you know, are somewhat like me, yeah. like that kind of, you know, in the back of the mind, wonder what a session is like. How do you even begin? Is it like a, hey, how are you? Why are you sad? Like, is that how that goes? <laughs> I mean, like I said, I'm just one of many therapists, right? Mm -hmm. So we all do things differently. I know for me, for the most part, I always start a session by um, doing what we call a psychosocial assessment, a biopsychosocial. It's pretty much a long assessment that asks you questions from when you were a little baby, Mm -hmm. a little baby to now. So as I'm asking you a bunch of questions like, where were you born? Who raised you? How is your relationship with your mom? How is your relationship with your dad? How is it now? Um, do you have siblings? All those questions. Have you ever been to a psychiatrist? How was high school? Like all these questions that you as an adult now probably don't even think about. It starts getting those gears turning. And then like in another session, I just might ask you, so how was your day? Did anything like make you angry today or this week? Is there anything from this week that you think is worth talking about? Like in the seat that I'm in and where I am in this whole thing, even at my job, people are seeking the help. It's not like I'm being put into like a, a, a prison and people are made to talk to me. Right. Like I'm people are seeking me. So it's a little different, too. It's not like, you know, working in a different setting where maybe people have to go to you or like right. when people are mandated to treatment. Yeah. So it's different. But even then, I just start by just asking about your life and then I'll see like okay, you tell me something about when you were five or eight years old. And then two weeks later, you're like, oh, I went to the grocery store, you know, and this person pissed me off. Like, da 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 they did this, 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 and that. And then something triggers in my brain, like, oh, shoot. I wonder if this reminds, if he realizes that he told me that his uncle used to do that to him all the time when he was a kid, when he just wanted to talk to him. And I'll mention that to you, and then you'll start connecting it yourself. It's like all literally, it's like you scattering puzzle pieces and the therapist is helping you. They're not doing it. They're right. helping you put it together so you can see what the picture is. Damn. Y'all need to holler at her. Right? I'm telling boy, you. I'm t- boy, <laughs> listen, I'm so like, I'm not even knocking you right now. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, you came on. Thank um, you. I'm glad that, you know, you expressed or shared some of these things with me. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely. 
definitely didn't think that this is how it was gonna go <laughs> but i'm glad that it went like this and I'm, i've gained a lot uh just from talking to you here mm -hmm. for what 10 15 minutes mm -hmm. um yeah, it's not been no 10 or 15 20 minutes. all right there was a fly in here maybe that like you is know. it really only been that short i don't know i don't know actually um Guys, but what? no definitely this this was this is great um i've gained so much just in the little bit of time i uh, and i would definitely um definitely definitely recommend to you know the viewers and anyone who watched this episode you should definitely come check her out real quick what's mm -hmm. your ig what's the ig or in uh how, how can people reach out to you i think my ig is nata.mcrose you think what you mean girl you think no? I, oh, spell it or is it mcrose.therapy hmm I really am not sure. All right, let's find out. Let's what I will say, though, is even if maybe you don't work with me as a therapist, maybe you really are considering seeking therapy. And maybe even if like you reach out to me and unfortunately I cannot take you on because I don't have a, any slots. I have wonderful therapists that I um, talk to all the time and who are amazing. And I definitely have referrals, too. Yeah, I would definitely recommend you because, again, I talked to you for 10 minutes and I'm healed, y'all. I'm here. I'm ready to date again. I'm lying. Oh, my God. Dating a That's pool crazy. is. Mm -mm. All right. So it is. Oh, bloody hell. I just went back. I just was on your. All right. It is. Dun, 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 M C R O S E dot T H E R A P Y. Mm -hmm. right. Yep. And there's a website on there. You can just click the website. And if you, I think if you scroll down to the bottom, there's like a little consultation box. You just put what's going on a little bit, a brief little thing. You can say that you saw me on this channel. And then I'll know also. No, so it's not going to ask you about your heartbreak or anything? No. Who? That's, that's not one of the questions. Oh. <laughs> No, that's not part of the questions. Okay. Um, so as we wrap up, mm -hmm. right, what are some, what's a key message that you would have to say to somebody that has any questions or even begin to remotely, I don't know, think that they're mm -hmm. going through some mental health issues? What would you say to them? Mm -hmm. So what I would definitely encourage you guys to do if you're going through a period of your life where you're like, um, you know, feeling something that it's not you, right? You know, we know when we're a little off sleeping more than usual, not sleeping at all, like obsessing over certain things, high anxiety, depression, all those things, I encourage you to seek a therapist. And there's a website called psychologytoday.com who has awesome therapists where you can literally pull it up and you can see the therapist's name. You can put in what you're looking for, all those things. What I want to make sure I say is be careful with this social media stuff. I know I'm very happy that people are seeking therapy and all those things. But unfortunately, there's a lot of people who seek therapy for one week and then they think they're a therapy guru. Be careful. Even the pages. Be careful of the people who are, you know, sharing this positive stuff, because the, the truth is, and I've witnessed it, some people with like one million subscribers or followers are struggling themselves. So I really encourage you to go to a professional. Instagram is great. TikTok is great. All those things are great. But really for you, I encourage you to go to a therapist who can give you individualized care for you, not just what someone because you started following them because you like their shoes is telling you to do. Don't do it. Yeah. You know, don't listen to the guy playing the little sad music guy that says, yeah, get over her. But yeah, no, none of that. I mean, some of those work. Like I said, it's very individualized. It might work for you, but if we're talking about some serious things, some serious mental health things, I would really encourage you to seek your own individual therapist. Yeah. Cool. Natalie, I can't thank you enough <laughs> for coming by. No, like I'm I'm probably going to be jamming my boosie you feel me mm -hmm. later on. But mm -hmm. <laughs> nah, for real, for real, like I, I appreciate you and appreciate you coming by. Uh, the fly is still around here somewhere. Yeah, it was having uh, fun too. But um. I've I've gained so much, and Have I mean you? it. No, I I definitely mean it. Like I, there you, I probably won't share right now. But you've <laughs> even mentioned things that I'm probably gonna be thinking about later on, just to kind of trying to figure mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. But you you've definitely um hit some key points that 
will make me think later on. So well, I encourage you to journal about it. Um, I keep somewhat of a journal. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily call it a journal, but uh, there's. Oh, sorry. Don't. <laughs> whatever, jot pad. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> no, like I, I, I write certain things down. Mm-hmm. Um, I do this thing when, when some, when somebody me- makes me feel something like a certain way that I think it, it impact my, my day, you know, mm-hmm. you know, in any way, sh- shape or form, I'll write it down until I get it out. But at the same time, it's going to sound a little bit contradictory, but I don't always think that I should say certain things to certain people. So I'll like write it down mm-hmm. and never say anything and just keep it pushing. Yeah. I mean, I'm it depends. Like, you know. It depends. There's, that's a whole, that's a whole nother thing. Like there's yeah. so many ways this conversation could have went and I'm glad that I'm here and that is really good. If that works for you, that works for you. But there actually also comes a time where you do need to say something. Otherwise, it's just going to keep repeating. Like the yeah. person is going to keep trying you because yeah. you didn't say anything. So with that being said, I do want to leave you guys with some tips. Mm. Like I mentioned, journaling. Journaling mm-hmm. is amazing. There's amazing like YouTube meditations. Just be mindful. Read the comments of how they are because sometimes there could be some interesting things that people do. But meditation Going to the gym, the bay, that's where I go. Yeah, listen, we at the gym all day, every day, all right? The gym, I support that one. The gym, yeah, but yeah, reading, listening to music, talking to selective people, joining a Facebook group, going out and enjoying where you live. Like we mentioned, the world is crazy. You have to find peace within yourself. And on top of that, we only live once. So we might as well at least try to find happiness. Carpe diem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boom. That's my favorite tattooed on me and it's all over and everybody house. else yeah so just say wait what <laughs> what you mean hey, you said it's it's nah it's uh, nah, I've, I've, I've never seen it popular tattoo. i've never seen it on nobody else i've seen yellow all the time really yeah no I've i mean not that i'm out here paying attention to people's tattoos mm. but i'm like ooh, but no nah, it's it's like my life's mantra i uh see mm-hmm that's what I use. That's the reasoning behind all the crazy things that I do is like, oh, I got to seize the day, you know? Yeah, I mean. And then take chances. And- whatever makes you happy, as long as you're not hurting anybody. No, never. I'm beyond that. But again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely want to have you on some more so we can continue <laughs> to discuss some other things. And again, you're there forever appreciated in my book you're the best thank you for coming thank you for having me thank you guys later